in the jungle baby <laughs> welcome back everybody joe the shirt is off the cuff i am your host i am joe the shirt and i'm back here with you uh hold on here mm-hmm. for those of you who tried listening in uh the other week with uh, little to no success to the uh my last episode which was the uh saint patrick's day episode my apologies there once again, we were uh, struck by technical difficulty. Oh, and one of my headphones isn't working right all of a sudden. Okay, there we go. Yeah, uh, what happened with that? Well, it uh, turned out I just run out of space on uh, the server that I use um, to broadcast a show. And they decided to cut me off. I thought I had a little time, a little more time left, and apparently I didn't. So I had to go get that fixed. Uh and I don't know if if I, I haven't had a chance to check yet. Or if, okay, you know, I had a chance. I've just been too lazy to check. But you should be able to catch that show now if you like. I mean, well, not right right now. Right now, you're listening to this show, which is important, god damn it. Uh, <laughs> uh, one of the things I changed uh, on the format of the show is that now my uh, show is pretty much, time-wise, it's unlimited. You know, okay, all right, okay, it's not... Un- unlimited. I'm I'm limited to three hours, but uh, I am not. <laughs> I can't imagine anybody wanting to just sit and listen to me for three hours by myself. And <laughs> my mother doesn't want to listen to me for three hours by herself. So, uh, but yeah. So now I'm available to do up to three hours of time, and also a uh, second biggest. Uh, change to the show, uh, you know, format-wise, is that uh, I uh, have a lot more storage space for my shows. Some time ago, I had to let go of a bunch of my shows, and I did not enjoy having to do that, but again, then again, at the, at the time, I did not have a job, and was not comfortable with the idea of having uh, my girlfriend pay for yet more shit that uh, had nothing to do with her life, or, or that we needed, you know, so... I, I, I made the sacrifice and I uh, let those shows go. In any case, that is not no longer the problem now. I am working, I'm making money, and I can pay for this now. So we, we won't run out of time together, people. We won't. <laughs> uh, the title of today's show is The Jamie Foxx Trot. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Jamie Foxx. Uh, God, I, I used to watch this guy on A Living Color from way back in the day. And... Uh, he was on, uh, what was the, the iHeartRadio Music Awards last night or something like that? And uh, I did catch the performance um, by him where he came out and, you know, told a couple of jokes you may have heard of, uh, directed at uh, soon-to-be complete transgendered uh, Bruce Jenner. Now, for those of you who may not remember who the hell Bruce Jenner is, let me give you a quick uh, history of Mr. Bruce Jenner. Bruce Jenner is a decathlete. Now, you may have heard of other aspects of Bruce Jenner. You know, he's a transgender. He's uh, he's uh, somehow connected to the Kardashians. All that other shit. You know what? No, no. He was a decathlete. All right? And a decathlete, by definition... Hold on. I actually have the definition here from the dictionary. Not Wikipedia this time. A decathlete performs in an Olympic event known as the decathlon. 
this is no ordinary event, okay? It's not just, you know, you, you, you go swimming, you dive off a board or something. It's, no, no, no. A decathlete uh, competes in the 100-meter, 400-meter, and 1,500-meter run, the 110-meter high hurdle, the javelin, and the discus throws, shot put, pole vault, high jump, and long jump. That's 10 events, thus decath, for decathlete being 10 there. Um, so this is something that, as a human being, as a physical specimen, you have to be quite the physical specimen, okay? And I do believe uh, Bruce Jenner won the gold for the decathlon. And uh, he was an Olympic hero. He was on all the Wheaties boxes back in the day. I mean, yes, Bruce Jenner was essentially the Michael Jordan or the uh, Tiger Woods of his time, except, of course, he was white. Uh, so <laughs> but, yeah, Bruce Jenner was the man. Are you shitting me? He was the absolute fucking man. So all these decades later, when we're finding out that one of the greatest, you know, sports figures in American history, human history, one of the most well-known, one of the most, one of the people in history, uh, revered as you know, uh, a, a symbol of manliness. Okay, I'm not talking about straight manliness here, just manliness. Okay, because I know plenty of queers out there that are way more manly than I am. Okay, <laughs> nothing against my queer pals, nothing at all. But, uh, but you know, he was just the man. And for, to, for, you, for me to find out that he is a transgender and he's been living uh, much of his life in the last, you know, several years, maybe even longer, as, uh, as a woman, wet, dressing in women's clothes and uh, lingerie, growing his hair long, uh, undergoing, uh, you know, uh, hormone therapy, and uh, planning on getting the whole kit and caboodle, you know, removed, basically, and having a having something else installed, you know, where he would essentially become a woman, you know, it it's, you can't tell me that that doesn't come off as shocking. Now, this, I, I've actually met transgenders from starting at a very young age. I remember my first transgender was a guy I used to work with at a movie theater, uh, uh, who's name right now i don't i don't recall actually i think it might have been jeff i'm not sure but he decided to go through this process of becoming a woman you know he was transgendering and he was doing the whole thing there uh and i hope i'm getting that terminology right i don't know if it's transsexual or transgender or maybe for for the purposes of this it doesn't really matter right now but this guy was going through uh this whole ordeal where he had to go with hormone therapy for a year and then he started uh, dressing and acting as a woman and growing his hair long like a woman. He was starting to grow breast, you know. And I think he wanted us to, other people that, we, that worked with him, to refer to him as either Stephanie or Kimberly or some shit like that, you know. So I was exposed to this pretty early on. This is not something, ooh, shocking to me. I mean, maybe at the time it was, but, you know, it's been a couple of decades. You know, but you know what? He wasn't Bruce Jenner, okay? I mean, I mean, right? I mean, to put it in perspective, you know, for today's, for people of today, you'd have to imagine, you know, that, you know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson all of a sudden decided he wanted to be a woman, you know? Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, Tiger Woods all of a sudden wanted to become a woman, you know? Uh, Peyton Manning all of a sudden wanted to become a woman, you know? And it, don't tell me it wouldn't shock you, okay? Don't tell me you wouldn't go, <gasps> you know, don't, don't give me that bullshit. Okay. And so Jamie Foxx, uh, knowing all this, decided to go with a couple of jokes. You know, uh, I think one of the jokes he put out there was, you know, we have a really big show for you guys today. Uh, Bruce Jenner is going to be performing a musical duet. He'll be performing both parts, m both male and female. <laughs> And then, he, and, then, and then he follows that up with, hey, man, I'm just busting your balls while I still can. <laughs> now, I think that's fucking funny. <laughs> and most of the people in that audience thought that was fucking funny. Okay? But then the Twitterverse, which I'm just going to start calling the pussyverse, because they're just a bunch of pussies on Twitter these days. Everybody's got their 140 fucking uh, wor uh, letters worth of opinion that they need to give out to people, you know? 
And they're talking about, oh, hey, it was horrible. That was unnecessary. That was not funny. Okay, was it horrible? Sure. Was it unnecessary? Definitely. Was it not funny? Fuck no, it wasn't not, not funny. It was fucking funny. You know, it, it just was. You know, and I got nothing against Bruce Jenner. But when you're Bruce Jenner, like I said, one of the manliest men in you know American sports history, and you decide that you want to become a woman, you better be ready for the fucking jokes. All right, don't don't act like you don't see it coming, Brucey. <laughs> like I said nothing against Bruce Jenner. I love Bruce Jenner. I, I thought he was a wonderful athlete. You know, you know, but you know. I mean, if I was still doing stand-up comedy, I'd do Bruce Jenner jokes, absolutely. He's a public figure, and I'm going to go after him. And, you know, and that brings up, you know, the question of, you know, the uh, the lesbian, bisexual, transgender, gay, I don't, LGBT, I don't even know how to pronounce it these days anymore. They're, but they're, they're, they're all upset about it. You know, they're all pissed off about it, saying that uh, uh, Jimmy Fox is uh, is transphobic. He's got transphobia, <laughs> which I doubt is true. <laughs> see, that's that's see, it's it it's it, 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 it's it's uh, it, the the term isn't correct. You know, it's like homophobia. The average guy is not actually afraid of homosexuals. The the, the idea the, of homophobia is that you know that you're actually afraid that you might be a homosexual. Well, you know what they need to. They need to change that term to be more accurate, you know, like self homophobia, maybe. Who knows? Self transgender phobia, transphobia, transgender phobia, whatever the fuck you want to call it. You know, but be that as it may, as everybody that knows me know, should know me well enough to know that I have nothing against gays, lesbians, transgenders, transsexuals, bisexuals. You know, uh, I've always said, as long as you're not hurting anybody, I don't give a flying fuck what you do. You know, unless you're hurting them and, you know, they approve of it because they want you to. You know, maybe they're paying you good money to hurt them. But, <laughs> you know, but as, lo as long as you're not hurting anybody against their will, let's put it that way, I don't care what you do behind closed doors. Hell, I don't care if you're a couple of big burly bears in uh, muscle t-shirts and tutus making out on the corner of the street. I don't care. Hell, I'll sit, I'll sit by and watch. Probably for a while. I mean, you, hell, if I saw a, prof a couple of professional wrestlers just making out in the corner, I'd watch that for a while. <laughs> I'd probably watch that even longer than watching a couple of hot lesbians making out. <laughs> you know, just to say I did. <laughs> um, but, but, but that brings me back to one of my, the, the old issues I've ever had with anybody that gets offended at anything. And that is, that I think, that we have the right to make fun of anybody and anything on this planet. Uh, there are many, many things on this planet that, you know, due to social norms, mores, uh, morals, religion, uh, you know, things happen. You know, the way we're brought up, things happen. And then something happens to go against our perceptions of them, you know, and when those things happen, uh, a very normal, natural way of reacting to these things is to make a joke, to relieve some tension, to point out the elephant in the fucking room. All right, I think, I, I think that the the politically correct, who I despise, I think the politically correct. <laughs> You know, they, they, I've said it before, I'll say it again, they've turned political correctness into modern censorship. And apparently, uh, we have, to, before we can talk about anything or make fun of anything, we have to get their fucking approval on it. I'm tired of that bullshit. You know, I want to, if I want to make fun of gay men, I'm going to make fun of gay men. If I want to make fun of transgender men, I'll make fun of transgender men. If I want to make fun of women, I'll make fun of women. I want to make fun of, uh, Big burly bikers. I'm going to make fun of big burly bikers and then run very quickly. <laughs> you know, but what I, I think that we should all be to, to misquote Dennis Miller. We should all be invited into the reindeer games. OK, we should all be ready to be put on the spot and be to be ridiculed, be joked about, you know, because, you know, be cajoled a little bit. You know, it's going to happen. <clears throat> you know, I'm tired of you know us living in this bullying society that uh, allegedly exists 
uh, in today's world, and it was cyberbullying. It was, ooh, they were, they were writing mean things about me on Facebook. Ooh, you know, uh, fuck that bullshit. <laughs> you know, but we, we, we really are getting to the point where you're, just, you're not allowed to make fun of anybody. And I, th- and, and I think that's bullshit. You know, uh, like I said, much love for Bruce Jenner. I don't care if Bruce Jenner wants to live his life as a woman. I, I really don't. I don't care that he's six foot God knows what, and he can uh, bench press my car. But, you know, but you tell me that that guy is, you know, becoming a woman, I got some jokes. Uh, <laughs> man, I said, I, I, I love his accomplishments. I used to, hell, I used to, I wanted to eat Wheaties just because he was on the fucking box. And I got to tell you, as a kid, Wheaties kind of suck. <laughs> If they put but if they put Bruce Jenner on a box of cocoa puffs, then I would have been a little bit happier. <laughs> so yeah, no, uh, much love for Bruce Jenner, much love for Jamie Fox, uh, Jamie, uh, Mr. Fox, <laughs> Mr. Jenner. You you did nothing wrong, Jamie Fox, Bruce Jenner. If you are the man that I believe you are, the true man that I believe you are, whether or not you have a cock and balls, making no difference to me. If you're the true man that I believe you are, that I believe that you will take it as a joke, maybe it hurts a little bit. You know, maybe it's that little shot to the gut, you know, that's, you know, now that it's so public, you know, that people are comfortable, you know, making jokes about it. But, you know, I believe that you are a strong enough and smart enough man to realize it's going to happen and you will have to deal with it. You know, so uh, that is it for that little segment. Uh, today's music is brought to you by Antonio. Hold on, what's that say? Geronimo. No, Gervino. Gervi, sorry, sorry, Antonio. Antonio Gervino. His first song was Ballet in New York. Coming up next, I think what uh, it's called Action Loop One. Not creative, but descriptive. I'm Joe the Shirt. I'm off the cuff, and I'll be right back. Off the cuff, Joe the shirts off the cuff. Okay, that's the end of that one. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Oh my god, Whew, got a little ranty towards the end of that segment, didn't I? Shit. <laughs> Let's go with some quick pieces of news before we move on. A uh, new study predicts that uh, we will be experiencing here in the northern hemisphere what they uh, a what they're calling a mega drought. Or as Mexico calls it, just another day in paradise. And if, uh, well, you know, if things, things get really bad, well, we can always do uh, what we've been doing here in California and just steal water from Mexico. <laughs> no, that's horrible. We shouldn't do that. I mean, we do do it, but, you know, we shouldn't be doing that. On the bright side, that's actually the name of uh, this, uh, <laughs> this little uh, piece here. It turns out that common words in many languages tend to convey happiness more than negative feelings. Believe it or not, as a race, the human beings like happy words. We do. We like words that sound better, that convey uh, happiness, uh, sociability, that when we speak to one another, we say these words more often than other words, regardless of what the topic is about. I mean, obviously, you know, you're not going to get too many, hey, happy, happy, joy, joys, you know, when you're talking about somebody's recent tragic death. But, you know, uh, more often than not, in any typical type of conversation where there's no, say, uh, specific emotional charge involved, like, say, uh, the death of a friend or maybe somebody you know is getting married, somebody you know is getting sued, you know, but in just in general, everyday conversations, we tend to just use words uh, that 
are uh, more positive than negative, which, you know, I would have to, I would have to like record myself <laughs> to, to figure that one out. But apparently the most commonly used words in human languages across a wide range of cultures are more likely to carry positive connotations than negative ones. The Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences confirms what has been called the Pollyanna Hypothesis. The notion that since humans are fundamentally happiest when socializing, human communication, no matter where you find it, will generally be happy. Now, this, this uh, theory was first, for, first thought of back in 1969. Hey, brotherly love, baby. Uh, suggests that the words conveying positive emotions are more prevalent and more meaningful, more diversely used, and more readily learned. Uh, they, comb through the, they comb through Twitter, the New York Times, the Google Books Project, Google Web Crawl, and a library of, of movies and television subtitles and song lyrics to come up with a list of roughly the 10,000 of the most frequently used words in 10 languages. Those languages being English, Spanish, French, German, Brazilian, Portuguese, Korean, Chinese, Russian, Indo Indonesian, and, and Egyptian Arabic. And then, then they paid native speakers to rate how they felt about those words on a nine-point scale, with one as the saddest and nine as the happiest. For each word, they collected 50 ratings from native, native speakers. This is what they found, that in each language on the whole used positive words more frequently than in a wider range of forms than negative words. The happiest language? Spanish, followed by Brazilian, Brazilian Portuguese, English, and Indonesian top the list of happiest languages. The ones that uh, had the least happiest were Chinese, which appeared dead last happy, uh, with Korean, Russian, and Egyptian Arabic. So uh, there, there you go. I got to tell you, I always thought those uh, Chinese and Russians look a little uh, on the Stoic side, and those Egyptian Arabics definitely. And let's face it, the Koreans never look happy. Uh, <laughs> look at me, I'm smiling, I'm happy. I, I'm, I speak Spanish and English. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, more happy news. Uh, the, uh, the upcoming merger of Heinz Ketchup brand to uh, Kraft. That's right, Kraft, uh, the, cheese, the cheese people, yes. Kraft apparently is looking into a $36.6 billion deal wherein uh, the, you know, Heinz will now own Kraft, which of course leads to the, of course, the really obvious thing, uh, ketchup-flavored cheese slices. Now, you're laughing now, or at least snickering at me with a dirty look. But you know that if somebody ever offers you a ketchup-flavored cheese slice, you're going to eat it. <laughs> Don't lie. <laughs> you're going to try it at least once. <laughs> I mean, hell, it worked with chocolate peanut butter. Why can't it work here? Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. <coughs> well, it's just like a... I don't know if you saw this on my Facebook account. I posted a, a picture of a, a Gerber baby food jar, which I still haven't found out if it's like just a gag or if it's like a real thing, but it's like Gerber baby food alcapudia flavor. Now, for those of you who are not Latino and don't know what an alcapudia is, an alcapudia is, um, how can I describe it? It's like, it's like, a, 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 like a banana... It, it, it's it's a meat pie, okay? It's got a crust. I think I believe it's made with uh, uh, green bananas. That's deep fried, but in the middle you have uh, meats, pork, chicken, beef. And they took this, and Gerber put it in a blender, and put it into a baby food jar. And then right on the jar they have pictures of capurias, and I'm like. Okay, I know that baby food very rarely, if ever, looks like what the food is supposed to look like, but damn. <laughs> uh, who's in the news these days? Suge Knight is in the news yet again. Uh, this time uh, he uh, was in court, and this time he collapsed again. Allegedly, it had to do with uh, his medical conditions and how he had not had an opportunity to receive his medicine before appearing in court. Or another theory could be when he was told that he would he would uh, have to post twenty five million dollars bail for his murder trial. <laughs> that would make me collapse in the middle of court as well. 
Uh, now, those of you out here, I think, I'm not sure if I've reported this before, but if you ever buy uh, herbal formulas at places like uh, GNC, Target, and Walmart, and Walgreens, uh, you know, those vitamin, pe- vitamin, you know, that they sell there, you know, all natural herbal vitamins, uh, it turns out about, mm, about 80% of these herbal vitamins uh, concoctions had didn't have the herbs that they specified that they did. So you might want to look into that and get your monies back. <laughs> oh, God. So much going on today. Oh, here's one for you. This one, I, uh, this is another one that pissed me off. Okay, uh, not too long ago, a uh, Afghani woman, let's see her name. I want to get, want to get it here. And for those of you who know how to pronounce the name correctly, I am sorry if I get it wrong. Her name was Farkunda. Farkunda was a 20, 28-year-old woman who was beaten to death, run over by a car, and then set on fire. Her crime was uh, apparently she was found burning the Quran, which in uh, among Muslims, Islamists, you know, it's, it's, it's a big no-no. They don't like that at all, you know. And uh, now while it is not, most Islamic countries do not prescribe, you know, specifically killing people if they burn the Quran. You know, not like in legal terms. It's not like on the books, usually. I mean, they can be in some areas. But uh, tribal laws will have this done. And in this case, apparently, uh, yes, let's see. Um, apparently, like there are like several hundred people who were involved in this, just kicking this woman in the head, throwing shit at her, and of course making sure to take pictures with their phones and uh, posting that on Facebook and, and uh, YouTube. Uh, among the among the said attackers, uh, the, there were 13 police officials that had been suspended. Apparently, uh, some of them were in charge of police officers that were present and did nothing. And then those people, that, those police officers that were in charge of the police officer did nothing, did nothing to them. So these guys, you know, these guys have been suspended and there's apparently, allegedly, more uh, more, more ramifications coming up. Now, here's the thing, though. Besides the fact that she was described as being mentally unstable, turns out she wasn't burning a Koran. No, not at all, apparently. Uh, let's see, as, as thousands gathered Sunday to bury a woman who was beaten and burned by an angry mob, Afghan officials said they had found no proof that she had burned pages of the Quran as her assailants claimed. Quote, we have reviewed all the evidence and have been unable to find a single iota of evidence to support claims that she had burned a Quran, said General Maha- Muhammad Zahir, head of the Interior Ministry, Ministry's Criminal Investigation Directorate. Uh, said at the funeral, she is completely innocent mm. um, let's see an, an investigation by the ministry ministry of Hajj Hajj and uh, religious affairs that said that charred papers found at the shrine in Kabul where she was attacked Thursday were from a Persian language prayer book not the Quran which is written in Arabic mm-hmm now, uh, according to this, uh, when Farkunda's body was taken from her family's house for the funeral, young men were crying out, Arahu Akbar, which means God is great. The same words her attackers were using before beating her and running her body over with a car and setting it on fire. Uh, okay. A couple of things here. <laughs> First one being, um, I... Okay, we all know I'm not a big fan of religion. Anybody's. I'm really, really not. And anything you do that hurts a human being in the name of religion, I think is wrong. Of course, I also have my definitions of what a human being is. So let's let's avoid that bit of semantic right there, okay? That's not what we're getting into. But I think <clears throat> that a human being as a whole, in general is worth more than any book 
Okay, it's not like you. Okay, let let let's just keep that in your heads. Okay, a human being is worth more empirically than any book. I don't care what book it is. Okay, we live in a society where we are. You know, okay, I'm, we're, we're allegedly supposed to look out for each other. We're supposedly you know here to take care of each other, help each other out, and because we've decided to live in a society and not as you know you know, seven billion hermits that we have to live together and deal with each other in a civilized way. Beating the shit out of a 28-year-old girl with mental deficiencies, you know, kicking the shit out of her, running over with a car and then burning her alive, if she still was alive, I'm not quite sure, you know, uh, because you think she burned a religious book, well, that's evil. What what you did? If if you condone that, then you condone evil. You condone the murder of human being over a paper and pen, and that's ridiculous. That's disgusting. Okay, and I would say this about any religious book: the Bible, the Quran, you know, I, Dead Sea Scrolls, I, anything you want to get. I'm sorry, no human, be- no book is worth more than human being. And then the fact that they got it wrong. It wasn't even the fucking Quran. <laughs> they got it fucking wrong. You know, I mean, I, I'd love to know. You know what? I said, one of the, one of the most uh, fascinating things about this story is the fact that there were so many people watching and chanting and then, and then taking video of it with their phones. Hundreds of people were doing this. You know, I'm sure they got some close-ups of the guys that did this. You know, are, are, are they going to get arrested? Are, are they going to be taken in? Uh, it seems unlikely, especially since, uh, for most part, you know, uh, female human life in these countries tends to be negligible in terms of uh, how much they care about it. But yeah, um, th- this did uh, upset me a great, great deal. You know, maybe... Uh, well, excuse me, uh, Farakunda as an individual? No, I don't care about her. You know that. I, I don't care about her as an individual. But as just a person on this planet, you know, for, for, somebody, for somebody to make this, in my opinion, arbitrary decision to punish somebody for this crime, you know, I, I mean, shit, I got a house full of books. I'll burn as many as I want. <laughs> And I don't care what you think about my property. See, that's another thing. It's like, you know, it's it's right up there with people that get all upset when somebody burns a flag, an American flag. It's like, I don't give a shit about the American flag as compared to the life of a human being. Okay? I don't. No, in my opinion, you want to take the American flag and burn it? Great. You want to take a leak on it? Go ahead. You know, it's it's cloth with it's cloth and uh, you know and and ink and you know it's coloring. That's that's all it is. You know, when 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 soldiers go to fight, they're not going out to defend the flag. That's what people people say. So we want to defend our flag. No, you're defending what the flag represents, which is your country. The people in your country is what you're defending. So when I hear about somebody getting their ass kicked or lynched because they burned a flag then the people that did that to that person violated what they what the flag stands for. All right? You're just as guilty as these people that, that murdered this poor girl because they thought she burned a book, a certain book. All right? And of course, the true irony, I think, is that uh, the proper way to dispose of an American flag is, of course, to burn it. Yeah, but you just have to have uh, enough pomp and and circumstance to to justify. You have, you have to have a ceremony to burn it. You can't just burn it on your own. Got a ceremony, and uh, and I'm not, you know, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think that that might be uh, very similar to how the proper way to dispose of a Quran that has, you know, been worn out to death. You know, something has happened to it. It's gotten damaged in some way. You know, that the proper way to dispose of it is, I think, to burn it. I'm not sure, not 100% on that one. Just thought of that. But there you go, yeah.
Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're we're uh, killing people over uh, paper, ink, and uh, cloth cloth with fancy colors on it and designs. In any case, it's time for a break. <laughs> I'm just keeping it so happy and jovial today, aren't I? Okay, we got more music today from uh, Antonio Genovino. And this one's called Cartoon Music Number One. Again, Antonio, you got to come up with some better titles here. But you can't argue with the results. I'm Joe the Shirt. I'm off the cuff, and I'll be right back. Show the shirt is off the cup, wabbit. Ah, <laughs> uh, having so much fun today. I really am, actually. I really, really am. All right, where's that going? Where's that going? Is that going over there? No, let's see. All right, put that over there. All right. Sorry, talking to myself. Ah, uh, which is pretty much all I do around here. Okay. What else have we got? Well. Uh, actually, we're going to go back a little bit to gays and lesbians and all that good stuff. Um, there's a ballot drive in uh, California that is being described as uh, anti-gay. Um, it has not been officially recognized yet. It was brought to the fore by a lawyer. Hold on, let me make sure I get his name right here. Um, da, 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 da. sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, shit, hell, okay. Oh, yes. The proposed initiative was brought by attorney Matthew McLaughlin, uh, which has bit, been met by a firestorm of anger and has tested the limits of California's normally very liberal attitude of putting even the most extreme ideas on the ballot. Now, um, now, the way it works is this guy went off and paid a fee of $200 uh, to get to submit the proposed initiative. After that, he has uh, 180 days uh, to collect 365 signatures in support of the ballot, um, which is a lot, even for somebody with a lot of money. And then the idea being that then this particular ballot will go on uh, up for you know review and votes, uh, I believe in the November of 2016. Okay. Uh, well, like I said, California is a very liberal when it comes to you know what they're willing to put out there. I mean, honestly, uh, that, one of the funniest things I think I've always, I've always thought about uh, American governmental system is that we are willing to listen to pretty much anything, any proposal. I mean, let me put it this way. Uh, there have been proposals uh, submitted to uh, presidents, our American presidents, asking them that, telling them that we should be building a Death Star. That's not a lie. That's actually gone, gone through and people have said, hey, we need to build a Death Star. Okay. Now, but now just here in California, let's see a few of the, uh, other initiatives, you know, that have been very controversial. Let's see 1978 initiative that would have banned gays and lesbians and their supporters from holding jobs at public schools uh, that was defeated 1978 the landmark proposition 13 is approved recalculating property taxes for millions okay 1994 the so-called save our state initiative which would have denied public benefits to those in this country illegally is approved and immediately overturned 
1996, the use of marijuana for medical purposes is approved. 2010, the so-called Christmas Carol Initiative, which called for schools to provide students the right and opportunity to sing Christmas carols, fails to qualify for the ballot. And in another one, 2010, a proposed initiative to ban divorce in California fails to garner enough signatures to qualify for the ballot, but its supporters vow to try again. Trying to make divorce illegal. Wow. <laughs> Woo, boy, domestic violence would just shoot through the fucking roof, wouldn't it? My God. Uh, and, you're not, and, you, and your kids, you know, don't have the right to sing Christmas carols in public schools. Wow, that there's... There, 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 there's another one for you. I mean, is is that that big a deal to some people? You know, if you want to sing the Hanukkah song, go ahead. I don't care. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing Jingle Bells, you sing the Hanukkah song, and everybody else sing whatever the fuck they want. Ah, but this particular initiative being brought to you here by Mr. McLaughlin um, is being re- referred to um, as, uh, let's see, um... Uh, as, quote, this proposal not only threatens public safety, it is patently unconstitutional, utterly reprehensible, and has no place in civil society. Uh, the state attorney general has asked for a court order allowing her to halt a pro- the proposed ballot measure that, that would, in effect, authorize killing gays and lesbians, saying it was both <laughs> killing gays and lesbians. <laughs> the, ba- the ballot initiative is known as, quote, the Sodomite Suppression Act which was filed by Huntington Beach attorney, Mr. Matthew McLaughlin. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, now, for a fee of $200, McLaughlin submitted a proposed initiative that authorizes the killing of gay people by bullets to the head or any other convenient methodology. <laughs> <laughs> In uh, response to this, uh, uh, an online petition at change.org is calling for McLaughlin to be disbarred and has already has more than 45,000 45, signatures by Wednesday. Uh, another initiative being proposed is that uh, the, uh, the fee of $200 be up to $8,000 to help avoid these, uh, how they describe it as, you know, Ridiculous measures, reprehensible, uh, offensive measures. Um, okay. Just so we all know, Joe the Shirt fully supports gays, lesbians, transgenders, bisexuals, and anyone else I have missed somewhere along the way. I fully support your right to exist. Okay, I do not condone the idea of just randomly killing gays, lesbians, transgenders, bisexuals, or anybody in between, okay, that I may have missed. I don't, I am not saying this. What I am saying is that I do support the idea that you can bring any ballot initiative to the forefront. I do, I support it, I support the concept that you can do this. Now, let's be honest here. I don't see this passing, no matter what, okay? (laughs) I don't see him getting 365,000 signatures (laughs) within 180 days. (laughs) There's just not that many neo-Nazis left, (laughs) okay? Let's let's say he got the 365,000 signatures. Okay, it goes to the ballot. (laughs) Could, could anybody see California actually passing this law? Does anybody even, for a moment, are any of you so fucking stupid that you would believe that this had any chance of passing at all? <laughs> Ever. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, that well, first of all, it's offensive that I think it's okay for them to put this on the ballot initiatives. Uh, you know, I, I, do I find what this man is trying to do offensive? Yes, I do. I also find it fucking funny because it's fucking ridiculous. So that this is never going to happen. I would never support this if this came up. I would obviously vote against it. You know, but I, I don't like the idea of censoring 
ourselves, of censoring our citizens, of telling them that, you know, that crosses the line. That's too much. You can't say that because it offends this group. Okay? Too much of this goes on. It really, I, 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 I like to believe, you know, this, this guy isn't doing this at his job. You know, it's not like he's walking into Walmart every day, you know, where he works as a greeter and saying, hi, welcome to Walmart. Want to start killing fags? It's, that's not what he's doing. I mean, if that happened, then Walmart could fire him. You know, but this is a private citizen that came up with a goofball fucking idea and decided to run with it. You know, so I, I, I don't, I, I think the important part here is to ignore the man's stupidity. Just let it go. Ignore his stupidity. If you can get the 365,000 signatures, get it on the ballot, then you do the right thing and you show those 365,000 idiots that they're in the fucking minority and vote it down. That's what you do. You don't, but you don't tell people that they can't say things, that they can't talk about things. For me, this isn't about uh, homosexuality. This is about freedom of speech. This is about the freedom to bring out ideas that you think are important. You know, it may not be, you know, murdering homosexuals. You know, it could be that, you know, maybe you, you do want fluoridated water. You know, or maybe it's uh, that you do want to control the number of cats that people can keep in their apartment, especially when you live in the apartment right next door. You know, hell, you know, right now here in California, you're only allowed to you're only allowed to legally own five cats if you live in an apartment, possibly more in a, in a house. But but if but get this now, if you have five, if you have five cats in your apartment, at least I think two of them, two or three of them. Uh, have to be indoor cats only, but there's there. But now they're trying to pass a law where you can own more than five cats, and uh, but, uh, but you but they all have to be indoor cats. They're not allowed outside. They all have to be spayed and neutered, and they all have to be microchipped. Now I'll ask you this: How are they going to enforce it? <laughs> you know, we all have known somebody that has had like a 15, 20 cats in their fucking house. There's shit all over the place. It's place smells. There's litter all over the place. There's cat food all over the place. There's cat hair all over the place. The place fucking stinks. And you know that nobody is ever going to do anything about it. But they made the law. <laughs> you know, so what the... <laughs> what I'm saying is that, no, don't, don't worry about it. Honestly. I mean, do worry about it to the point where you go out. If it becomes, if it goes on the ballot, you vote against it. Definitely go with that. You know, you know, unless you don't want to. If if you support the idea of shooting homosexuals, then you know, you know, killing homosexuals, then you go ahead and vote for it. I will not deny you your right to vote for the things that you believe in. But just so you know, if it's something stupid, it's probably going to be defeated. So again, don't worry about it so much. Ah. And now it's time for yet another break. I'm Joe the Shirt. We have more music today from, by Antonio Ger Ger Gernovino. Uh, this one's called Pirates. Ooh, I like it. Me Johnny Depp's. I'm Joe the Shirt, I'm off the cuff and I'll be right back. Timbers. Show the shirts off the cuff. <laughs> That's right. We've gone beyond the 46 minute mark. That's right. I can do three hours of this shit if I want to. And you sick, twisted fools, listen in. 
go go date, man. Really, go get a date. <laughs> uh, talking about countries where crazy shit tends to go on. I got one for you here. Um, no, actually, the Britain, Great Britain, the English, are, I've been uh, I've been given this very interesting uh, reputation for being very proper people, very uh, noble, proper, well-spoken, educated. They're, they're fancy people. You know, they're, 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 they're above it all. Not if you knew some of the Brits I've known in my time. <laughs> but something, uh, to put a chink in that armor, has come up recently from London. Uh, allegations about so-called VIP pedophiles involve prestigious London addresses, some of the highest ranking members of Brit Britain's establishment, and the suspected abuse of young boys in the 1970s and 80s, including three of them who were slain. Yeah. Apparently, six members of Parliament have been implicated in the scandal, which threatened to expose a powerful political elite who may have raped and exploited juveniles in for more than a decade and put their self-interest ahead of the protection of children. Well, yeah, you know, when you're raping children, I'm pretty sure you're putting your self-interest ahead of theirs. Uh, John Mann, a member of Parliament, has presented Scotland Yard with a dossier that, has, that he said names 22 high-profile figures, including three serving in the House of Commons and three members of the House of Lords who are believed to have been involved in a pedophile ring. Now, there are no allegations that the six parliament members were involved in the incidents in which children died. No, they, they were just, you know, they were just raping them. They weren't killing them. So they're, they're, they're six of the good guys. Uh, the dossier includes the names of 14 conservative politicians, five labor politicians, and three in other parties, man told reporters. He also alleges that as many as five pedophile rings, five, goddamn, were operational at the same time during the 1970s and 80s, and that two whistleblowers who knew about the nefarious activities by members of parliament meant suspicious deaths. They were whacked, mate. Um, <laughs> recent news that an alleged Westminster pedophile ring could implicate currently serving parliament members has sent fresh waves of disgust throughout Britain. You whole yeah. Uh, according to this, uh, uh, the evidence, evidence from the, according to the evidence of one witness, known by the pseudonym Nick, uh, told detectives that he was abused from, say, ages of 7 to 16, from 1975 to 1984, at a posh London apartment complex in Dolphin Square, popular with legislators because of its close proximity to Parliament. Well, yes, you know, when I'm a member of Parliament, what's important to me, of course, is where can I get good tea and some boy ass as close as humanly possible? Uh, Nick said that he once witnessed a boy being strangled to death by a conservative member of parliament. Uh, he also said he was taken to Dolphin Square in a chauffeur-driven car and abused by a single man, a group of men, uh, or during parties. So he was just being passed around left and right. Um, in 2012... Uh, uh, let's see, uh, came to, it came, let's see, uh, sorry, allegations of a Westminster pedophile ring first came to light in 2012, but resurfaced in July when it became known that a 40-page dossier that accused eight figures of pedophilia, pedophilia had vanished. Oh my, politicians trying to hide the truth? No. Trying to hide evidence? No. No politician would ever do that. Uh, okay, now, I love this. Anti-child abuse campaigners say they've long been aware of allegations of atrocities by those in the highest echelons of power, but fear they might never be adequately investigated. Quote, I would like to be able to say we are shocked by this, but unfortunately we've been hearing allegations along these lines for many, many years, said one John Bird, operations manager at the National Association for People Abused in Childhood. Wow, that is brutal. I... I I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I honestly don't. Um, oh, yes, I do. These guys are horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. And now I'll tell you right now, I don't think that, you know, you know, the English are the only ones that, that do this, you know, but uh, I'm sure it's happened here in the United States plenty of times uh, in other countries for that matter. But I just, I find it, 
Look, I find it horrible. It's sad. It's terrible that these boys had to go through this. Because Lord knows if I had ever had to go through anything like this, uh, I certainly wouldn't want to hear jokes about it. But it wasn't me, so I can make jokes about it. I can talk about it. You know, I, what these guys did is, is terrible. It's horrible shit. Uh, I think they should be in prison uh, for a very, very long time. I think the rest of their lives would probably be long enough. But I want those lives to be long lives because I want them to suffer. You know, I it just amazes me. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, honestly. You know, it's one of those things where these where these things happen in the world we live in and we and, and people turn a blind eye to it, you know, be it because they're paid to or they're afraid to do anything about it. You know, and I, you know, I'll be the first one to admit I don't know what I would do necessarily in a situation like this. I mean, we'd all like to think that if we were somebody's personal assistant or their uh, secretary or their chauffeur, or, you know, or somebody that worked for one of these very, very powerful people, that if we saw a young child being sexually, physically abused, and in some cases even murdered, that we would have what it takes to, to come forward and say, hey, this guy, you know, uh, Prince Edward over here, he's been raping young boys. We'd like to say that we would do that. We'd like to say that, you know, if we found out something like this, that we would say, hey, Barack Obama fucks young boys too. We would love to be able to say that publicly and, 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 and have the strength of our convictions to go through it. You know, but let's face facts. I mean, human beings are very corruptible. You know, they're very corruptible. They can, they can be intimidated and they can be bought. You know, so it doesn't shock me in the slightest that this has been going on for decades. And believe me, that's, this is just one incident that we're talking about here yeah sure five pedophilia rings but one incident that yeah sure it occurred for like you know a couple of decades but you have to believe that it's happened before and it's going to happen again and you know and we have to try to encourage you know the people that we raise in our society all societies that when something this vile this low this disgusting happens to our children our kids, that we are going to go out there and punish those people, that we are going to go out there and we have the courage to say, hey, I saw him do this, and you and risk that something happens to you. You have to risk that they never get arrested. You have to risk that they never pay for their crimes. And you have to risk that maybe you end up in the hot seat. You know, I'd like to believe that that's what we do. You know, I'd like to believe that that's what I do. But I'll be the first one to admit that I, I can't guarantee it. Nobody can guarantee that they will do the right thing until they're put on that spot. When you get on that spot and you, and you have to, you know, shit or get off the pot, then you'll know. You know, the human condition tells me that a lot of people are going to fail that test. You know, people that claim that they would never fail that test. You know, I mean, you know, they, hey, you want to go back to Jesus for a second? Hey, Jesus told his apostles that one of that one of them would betray him. And what did that guy do? He said, no, 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 none of us would do that. I'd never do that. No. And 30 pieces of silver later, we all know how that story ended. <laughs> ah. One of my f favorite places to visit. Apparently... Did you know that India is the second largest exporter of uh, of beef in the world? Did you guys know that? India, yeah, yeah, second largest producer of beef in the world. They uh, chop up, kill, sell off beef all the time. Lots of it. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, but wait, 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 aren't cows supposed to be sacred to the Indians? Okay, yes, to Hindus, which represent roughly 80% of India. But they did find a way around it. Uh, apparently, it, while it's against the law to kill cows, it's not against the law to kill buffalo, which is not a cow. I mean, technically. I mean, it, it really is a cow. I mean, it's a bovine. They're both bovines, you know. But one apparently 
is a, a holy animal, and the other one is a cheeseburger. Okay, so uh, but recently uh, from Mumbai, India, uh, one of Asia's largest slaughterhouses there, um, more that, that has more police officers than cattle. Um, a nearly month-old ban on the slaughter of cattle in one of India's largest states has put thousands out of work and created new problems for struggling farmers as conservative Hindu pol politicians act to protect the bovine. Um, the commercial hub Mumbai in Maharashtra state uh, has, two th has 2,000 cattle traders, transporters, butchers, and others who have lost their jobs. Across the state, an estimated 1 million people who work in the cattle industry could see their livelihoods threatened because they're trying to spread the ban on, uh, the, on the slaughter of cattle of any kind all across the country, um, which would mean a serious problem for people who happen to raise cattle because then what do you do with them? Uh, <coughs> coin to this... Uh, uh, also, another thing to consider is that, again, is that not all India is Hindu. Many minority Muslims and Christians, as well as low caste Hindus, consume bull meat because it is a cheap source of protein, nearly half the price of chicken or lamb. Get that. Bull meat's cheaper than chicken or lamb. <laughs> Which is why they use, and, and, because that's just because there's so many, so many of them. So what happens is nobody buys the animal, you know, and the farmer will have to look after it even after it becomes useless, can't use it for work, can't use it for anything. It will add to his expenses and then he's not going to then then the animals are going to die because he can't make a living to su to support them. Uh, apparently in this particular province, possess even possession of beef is punishable by a fine of $160 and up to 5 years in prison. That's two years longer than the conviction for sexual assault in India. Uh, there and and my, you got to remember, one hundred and sixty dollars is a lot of fucking money in India. Okay, a lot of fucking money. I mean, the the beef workers that I was talking about here, one of them was trying to support his family on the fifteen dollars a day he makes. <laughs> All right, so the one hundred and sixty dollars that he might get a fine for, fuck the prison term, that's about a third of a month's wages. <laughs> uh, there, in other uh, provinces, of, uh, provinces of India, uh, nor in the northern state of uh, Har Haryana, uh, they're trying to push it up to a 10-year prison term and up to $1,600 in fines. So uh, once again, we have a religious group who uh, is basically trying to fuck up the livelihood and ways of living of others to defend their religious beliefs. Now, it's, it's, it's not all that different from a lot of, a lot of things like, uh, you know, like homosexuality, to bring that back again. You're, you're, it, it doesn't directly affect you. I mean, <laughs> you know what? Uh, here in the United States, we cow all the time. And, and you know what? Last time I checked, India does business with the United States. Do you, do you see them going, oh, no, 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 no. We will not be dealing with you while you still have all those McDonald's open. <laughs> no. No. Well, they know that uh, money talks and bullshit walks. Uh, but uh, within their own country, which they feel they can control, uh, they're, they're willing to, you know, oppress minorities all for the sake of, you know, protecting a cow, uh, you know, you know, ch fining people thousands of dollars, sending them to prison. Hey, let's let, let's kill them too while we're at it. What's that? You had a hamburger? Death. <laughs> and as for your punishment, you will be chopped up, ground up, fried, and served with cheese on a nice bruschette bun. Um, well, there you go. Now we're killing people because of cows, flags, and books. <laughs> And I think that's my time for today. I, I, whew, that was even longer than I thought I was going to go. Thank you for listening once again. Our music today is brought to you by Antonio Genovino. Uh, his last song for the day is called An Epic Day, fittingly enough. I'm Joe the Shirt. I've been off the cuff. Thank you for listening. Yeah, that's theme music, bitches.